Hello and welcome back and today we are continuing once again our look at DSM-7 running on different Synology NASes and today is the turn of a very very popular NAS. I would say it's when people start to take NAS seriously. This is the DS220 Plus. This is the Intel dual core 2 gig DDR4 memory NAS solution from Synology and today I'm going to be installing DSM-7 on this. DSM-7, the RC version, release candidate, and we're going to be seeing how well this runs it. Now, a number of you may already own this NAS, or you've got another Synology NAS. We're going to be covering lots of them this week with this version, and this is to help you decide whether you should upgrade, because you don't have to go straight over to DSM-7. You can stick with 6.2, but if you move over to 7, it's incredibly difficult to switch back to 6.2, and a number of you will be like, yeah, I'm going to sit this out, and I get that. So, I'm making this video as part of a series of videos right now, this week, where I'm looking at the current generation of Synology NASes, everything from the 120J, 220J, 220, the 920 Plus, the 1621, and more, and we're looking at how well they run DSM-7. How are we measuring them? Well, if you were watching the other videos, you'll know that we are looking at them on how well the system runs the graphical user interface, the control panel, file station then we're going to move on to multimedia with synology photos audio station and video station and then finally we're going to be looking at how well the nas runs for surveillance all of that in dsm7 all the way through the system now dsm7 has a one gig recommended minimum memory to run so it's worth highlighting this with two gig of memory should be absolutely fine so let's make our way over to the screen let's turn this bad boy on and we're going to take a little look how well DSM-7 runs on this NAS. Let's go. Right, so we've made our way onto the DS220 Plus desktop right here. I will highlight that try as I might to remove all the background sound in this area. In order to get this video done today of all days when I get all of these units together and I'm on a tight schedule, I'm fighting against all manner of sound barriers right now, notwithstanding the fact that I am surrounded by a bunch of NASs that are still indexing to make sure all of this job is done on time. Outside of the office, get this, a steel band is playing. There you go for living by the seaside between seagulls and literally a steel band outside. This is the things I have to contend with, and I'll be honest, I am being driven close to madness. But, as dull as this is, let's crack on with this video. Let's log straight into the DS220+. Plus. See how quickly it does it. There we go, we're in, and boom, we're on the re uh, desktop there. We've already done the indexing. We've already done a lot of background multimedia stuff ready for this video. As you can see, uh, you can go ahead and download the DS220+. Plus. Um, version of DSM-7, just click that button there, boom, it is the RC release candidate, and uh, there you go. Uh, if you carry on, you can go to their own website and find out a little bit more about the minimum one gig of memory. They recommend uh, having this device uh, to be at uh, its most optimal, otherwise it may affect system performance. And of course, some of the systems that this is available on really is really astounding. If you look at the hardware capabilities of some of these devices, Genuinely, these are some of the weakest NASes I've ever seen. So, again, very impressed that the SM7 is running on those systems too. And it's going to be really interesting to see just how low I can go. Uh, we still have the DS120 Plus here on my selection of NASes. But the indexing, uh, not the 120 Plus, the 120J even. But unfortunately, the indexing has not finished on that system yet. So that video is going to take a little bit longer. But here we are on the desktop of our DS220 Plus with, if we have a look, that version of DSM-7. Let's go into the info center. And you can see right there at the top, boom, DS220 Plus running DSM-7. If we scroll along down, it's running the Intel Celeron dual core uh, J4025, uh, two core 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up and two gig of memory. I've not upgraded it. That is the system. And again, very responsive. All of the options reacting straight away to everything that we want to do. We can access all of the options very, very quickly indeed. We can flick through. We can find out more information. We can go to Synology account information, indexing information, task scheduling. And it's, you know, it's responding exactly how I'd like it to be. If we're going to file station there, it opens up immediately. We can even open up, open up multiple um, file station windows if we choose, which I was doing for copy and pasting. We can go ahead, go into the shared folders, 
go into the different areas we've got photos and stuff on there you may hear the laptop fan ramp up the tiniest bit we are recording using obs recording software and again that may affect some of the visual effects but it shouldn't do too much and hopefully uh, the smoothness of dsm7 on the 220 plus will reign through on this system uh, if we go ahead and open up the resource monitor we'll try and keep an eye on that throughout this video so we'll move that there to there. We'll leave the resource monitor there on screen as much as we can. Some of the applications we're going to be running later in the video will open in different tabs. But for now, we can go ahead. We can find out more information about these files. Let's go um, there. Let's flick a random birthday file there. Onion rings, obviously. And it's all nice and responsive. The thumbnail's been generated really, really quickly. Change the viewpoints there. We can go for medium icons and thumbnails. All being generated lovely and quickly there all being indexed there in the background nice and easily again we've got those test files for video stuff later we've got some music files there we're not really allowed to play them but um we can still look at the way the system handles it memory already uh, ramping up a little bit there to 59 uh, percent utilization if we go into the task manager it'll give you a little idea why we are running uh, a lot more processes than before for those of you that caught my ds220 plus video maybe it would be relevant and uh, 220j uh, video what i want to do is give you some idea just to, for a sense of relativity how dsm runs on the j we already logged into the j a little while before this video so if i open up the resource monitor on that this should give you some idea about the difference between these two platforms remember this nas here is being forced to hibernate things quite a lot you can see a lot of sleeping apps there we were running the surveillance application as well um, on that ds220j and that's a realtek 64-bit processor so again we had the live view i kind of mucked around with the cameras a little bit there in the background bring that camera around a little bit um, now, if we look here at the resource monitor of our DS220 class, the fan there of the laptop starting to ramp up. I apologize if you're hearing that. You can see a lot more concurrent apps that haven't been suspended. It's taken advantage of the larger amount of memory. So even though they're both running at 50 to 59% memory utilization, the way that the system handles the background application, handles the background processes, is very, very different. And that, that is how the difference between these systems runs. So I'm going to leave that 220J um, there in the background in case we need it. And we're going to stick with the 220 Plus. Go back to the performance monitor there on screen. And we're going to start running some of these different processes. So first and foremost, let's go ahead with photos. It's the one that a lot of people care about the most. You buy Synology now as you want to know that your photos are going to be fine. And straight away... The thumbnail generation, we've already done the indexing for the AI stuff, so it should all be done by now. We set this up, um, I believe, about 36 hours ago uh, to do all of it, and we used a lot of the new uh, Synology um, uh, cloning of configuration. And as you can see, we have some, um, oh, look at these pictures of Ron, 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 Ron. Honestly, you're showing yourself up for the internet, mate. You can see there, got all that information there. There's the, uh, the span crew. Um, if we have a look there, we've got lots of information there. We can find out more about the device that took the photo. Much, much, much more metadata scraping there and a great deal quicker than we've seen previously. If we go into the album settings there, go into the places, there's all the options of locations and more. Go into the tags there. Tags still haven't finished there, unfortunately. But again, we're not going to be too we're not going to be too critical of that because we haven't been running the system, in my opinion, long enough for us to be able to point at that but still we're seeing plenty of smooth running there and again the thumbnail generation the photo viewing there the information in the background who doesn't love a solid roast there in case you're wondering a pub called the amsterdam uh, in worthing massive shout out for them insane meals there that they serve but enough of the plugging there good lord um let's make our way into audio um audio station now again unfortunately we can't play any of the music because of youtube and copyright and how the video will get the monetization suspended or it'll just get taken down completely and you get copyright strikes but again playing files we can go ahead just double click a file oh we've got them shouldn't have had that playing there we shouldn't have had that sound playing might even leave that in Do you know what let's test the youtube box see again plays the file very very quickly nice and responsive 
all the way going through there. And again, there is metadata scraping and those options always in the background. And it plays audio just like you would expect. Obviously, very few people are going to access the audio on a NAS directly. Um, they would typically um, use, um, you know, like a Fire Stick or, you know, um, Alexa and stuff like that. And unfortunately, we're not going to be testing that today. But it's still good that you can access those files. And I think that's a good enough sign. If we go into the video station side of things, opens up into a new tab. And we can see there lots of information there already in the background. You can see the metadata scraping still hasn't taken place fully there in the background. But again, we've got all of that stuff. They're all lined up, all of those TV shows. Again, we always test the same media files simply because we know that those media files, uh, they're the right codex and we can see them. But again, we can scroll the way through. It seems absolutely fine there. Beginning to end, working absolutely fine there. Go ahead, got the playback quality. We can flick between them there. We can flick it down to low quality on the fly, nice and quick. While it's doing that, we can look at the resource monitor there. This is only a, an H.264, um, I believe maybe 1.5 uh, megabit rate. So I think this is absolutely fine, but it's, you know, it's transcoding that stuff there in the background. I would expect this, and again, we're, this is more about the hardware than DSM, but it's just nice to know that these features run there in the background. What I'm going to do now, um, and towards the end of this video, I am going to run a lot of these services simultaneously to see how DSM-7 on the DS220 Plus handles that. Next, let's make our way on to Surveillance Station. Let's go ahead and go into it there. We'll leave Video Station open there in the background for a little bit longer, I think. Um, if we go into the IP camera settings, we can see that I've already equipped two cameras there. We have a dome camera and a fixed bullet camera already added there. If we go into the live view settings, we can see, again, we've got that camera there. Let's remove out. can see that camera's fairly responsive it picked up that feed although the camera on the right hand side the bullet seems to be running ever so slightly delayed so hopefully there let's go this delay there of approximately 20 maybe 25 seconds as you can see this really awful is going to come up in the video ways in which i've tried to limit the sound of those two nazis uh, behind the wall there but nevertheless at least we've all still got that going on there and again we've got the pan tilt zoom we've got the ability to zoom in and all the rest of it we can just go yep there i am in case you guys are wondering where you are in this picture, we can go even deeper, go deeper and deeper if we choose. We can go all the way in, nice and straightforward, while I'm rabbiting into the mic there. So again, surveillance on this seems to be running, and although I've not added many of the applications that are readily available in DSM, I think DSM's um, own surveillance platform is still running pretty smoothly there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try and run as many processes of each type as possible and see how the system reacts. So we're going to leave the cameras there open. I'm then going to go ahead into the movie section and I'm going to go ahead and uh, play Little Shop, always a classic. Let's go in there, fast forward it. While it's playing it, I'm also going to transcode that file down to the lowest setting. So that's going to be playing Little Shop of Horrors transcoded while these camera feeds are being delivered to the Synology NAS. At the same time as that, I'm going to open up Audio Station and I'm going to play a file. Let's go for um, gaming music because that's the one YouTube might not actually take us down on. So let's go ahead and go with the Yoshimitsu from Tekken 3. So that's going to play that there at the bottom. You can see that there it is playing it. While it's doing that, we're also going to open up Synology Photos. Uh, oh, not Synology, that's Synology Drive, but why not? We'll leave that on there too. Uh, in for a penny, in for a pound. I have to get used to Synology Photos then. That's going to be fun for me. Synology Drive there, we've got our team folder as well. We'll leave that open. Why not? At the same time, we're going to let some of these GIFs play, perhaps. We're going to let these guys dance the night away over there on that GIF. Let them do their thing. Well, I've got Synology Drive. Actually, while we're in Synology Drive, let's go ahead... Uh, make a copy of that let's copy that to a new directory why not let's chuck that um, from the photos into the pictures directory just for the sheer hell of it and then at the same time we're going to go into file station and from file station we're going to go ahead go into the video tab grab all three of those we're going to copy those and dunk them into the share directory so we are running all kinds of simultaneous processes here all at once we're doing some copy actions uh, all over the place so while it's doing that 
let's go ahead in here and have a look and see how that's affecting the resource monitor while it's performing all those tasks. So if we go into the task manager, we're going to be able to see all of those services and processes running there in the background. We're seeing a little bit of lag, has to be said. We are running quite a lot of things there in the background. We can see the volume utilization is the biggest bottleneck right now with the maximum throughput of those two drives inside an arrayed environment being pushed to their limit somewhat, it has to be said. The video is still playing there in the background in surveillance station. If I roll away, we can see if there's any um, slight uh, lag there with regards to that. We're seeing it move around. We're seeing a catch up there on the footage. And then from there, we can go ahead back into drive, see that read write action happening there in the background. But again, we're not getting that detailed list of processes. Nonetheless, this isn't really something we can critique the system for. As long as it's doing the job, as you can see, it's performing those right actions there. We're getting an average there of just shy, oh, just over 70 megabytes per second. We're still running that terrible GIF of my poor friends who I'm mocking mercilessly here. And all of those GIFs they're running on screen. The fact that these are running in the web browser always is something I'm impressed by. And the fact that all of that surveillance there is running. All of these tabs, clearly there's a little bit of a jump there on some of them where they are responding as soon as I look at them. And there's a bit of catch up there. So if I put my hand up there while we're looking at the feed, arguably we're going to be able to see what the delay is there. So again, it is a little bit of catch up there with regards to the live feeds. And some of those feeds are being recorded. But overall, I'm quite impressed with the way this NAS is dealing with, you know, some fairly intensive operations. Let's not overlook the fact that this transcode here is already on its own. Quite a dense little operation. But I'm going to wrap things up there. This has been how well the DSM-7 release candidate um, runs on a DS220+. Plus. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will be looking at other NASs, so I recommend you check that out. Once again, I do apologize for the background noise here. I've tried my best to limit the surrounding ambient noise here and to change the mic operation here, but short of postponing these videos another week or so, I thought it best just to power through and get these out there for you guys now the release candidate is up there, and you're wondering about whether to upgrade your NAS to DSM-7 and potentially not be able to roll back i hope you enjoyed it click like if you have and of course click subscribe to learn more let me know what you thought in the comments and if you do have a nas you want me to check out maybe i can get hold of it via arsenology nicely enough and then i can run that test for you but otherwise i will see you next time